In this video, I work through an exam question involving a linear combination of two vectors. And the question or exercise is the one we see here. We're asked to write vector C in terms of the two vectors A and B. On the right hand side of the screen, we can see that we have those three vectors drawn for us. So let's get started. I'll just write S O L as in solution. When working through a question like this, the first thing to do is to make a note of each of these three vectors components. Looking at vector A, we can see that to get from its tail to its head, we move one unit to the right and two units upwards. So in component form, vector A is equal to one, two. Looking at vector B, we can see that to get from the tail to the head, we move one, two, three units to the left and one unit downwards. And so in component form, that vector is equal to negative three, negative one. Finally, looking at vector C, to get from its tail to its head, we need to move one, two, three units to the left and one, two, three, four units upwards. So vector C has components negative three, four. Now, when we're asked to write C in terms of A and B, what that really means is we need to find the linear combination of the two vectors A and B, which equals to C. In other words, we need to find the value of two numbers, which I'll call P and Q, such that vector C is equal to P times the vector A plus Q times the vector B. And in fact, I'll go ahead and box that. That's a linear combination of the vectors A and B. Now, writing C, A and B in their component form, this turns into negative three, four equals to P times one, two plus q times negative three, negative one. I now multiply each of the components of the first vector by p and each of the components of the second vector by q. So this becomes negative three, four equals to one times p and two times p. So that's the vector p, two p plus the vector negative three times q and negative one times q. So that's the vector negative three Q and negative Q. Finally, I add the two vectors we have on the right hand side here, which leads to negative three, four equals to P minus three Q, two P minus Q. Now at this stage, we know that we need to find P and Q such that the vector on the left hand side here, negative three, four equals to the vector on the right hand side. And it's important to remember that two vectors are equal or equivalent if and only if their corresponding components are equal. In other words, negative three has to be equal to P minus three Q and four has to be equal to two P minus Q, which leads to two equations. And I'll just write those equations here. We have negative three, which has to equal to P minus three Q and four, which has to equal to two P minus Q. What we're now faced with are two equations with two unknowns, those being P and Q. And in fact, I'll name each of those two equations. I'll call the top one E1 and the bottom one E2. And so our task has now become to solve this pair of simultaneous equations. And we could do so by elimination or by substitution. And I'll solve this by substitution. And for that, I'll start by rearranging the first equation here and making P the subject. So I'll just write using E1, so E1 and two dots. We can rearrange this top equation and state that P equals to three Q minus three. Now, substituting the expression we have for P inside E2, the second equation, E2 becomes four equals to two times in parentheses, three Q minus three, minus Q. That becomes four equals to six Q minus six minus Q, which leads to four equals to five Q minus six. Adding six to both sides of this equation leads to 10 equals to five Q. And finally, dividing both sides of this equation by five, we quickly find that Q equals to two. And I'll go ahead and box that result. There we go. Now that we know the value of Q, we go back to the expression we had for P and replace Q by two. And in doing so, we find, I'll write it in gray, P equals to three times two minus three. 
Finally, since 3 times 2 minus 3 is equal to 6 minus 3, we can state that p equals to 3, which I write at the bottom as well, p equals to 3. There we go. These two results allow us to go back to the linear combination we wrote here and state that c is equal to 3 times the vector a plus 2 times vector b. And that's the final answer. Now, as such, we could stop there. Indeed, we've answered this question. But to convince ourselves that c is indeed equal to 3a plus 2b, let's go ahead and draw this linear combination. For that, I'll use the grid on the right-hand side, and starting from any point, like this point right here, I start by drawing the vector 3a. Now, 3a is the vector which is parallel to vector a, points in the same direction, but is three times longer. And since vector a has components 1 and 2, 3a will have components 3 and 6. So starting from here, to get to its head, we'd have to move three units to the right, followed by six units upwards. So that's 3, 4, 5, 6. That's right here. So vector 3a is the vector I'm drawing right now in blue. There we go. That's vector 3a. Now to add the vector 2b, I start from the head of 3a and draw the vector which is parallel to vector b, points in the same direction, but is two times longer. Since b has components negative 3 and negative 1, 2b will have components negative 6 and negative 2. So starting from this point here, to get to the head of 2b, I move to the left 6 units, so that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and downwards 2 units, that's 1, 2, right here. And so 2b is the vector I'm drawing in green right now. There we go, that's 2b. Finally, the resultant of these two vectors, in other words, the sum of these two vectors, is the vector joining the starting point, so the tail of 3a, to the finishing point, that is, the head of 2b. And that would be this vector I'm drawing right now. There we go. Looking at this vector here, we can see that to get from its tail to its head, we need to move 1, 2, 3 units to the left, and 1, 2, 3, 4 units upwards, which corresponds to the components of vector c. In other words, this orange vector is vector c, and we can confirm that c is equal to 3a plus 2b. And there we have it, that's it for this tutorial in which I solved an exam-style question involving a linear combination of two vectors.